Hey friends, it's your boy Big TCG Fan coming back at you with another video. Today we are going with our Commander of the Week for April 19th, 2020. As a reminder, we'll take one commander, either a legendary creature or legal planeswalker, and talk about them. First, I will talk about the lore of the character, deck building possibilities, and grading the card as a commander. Here is our scoring metric for the commanders. I have several tiers that are based on the card's abilities. And our commander for the week is... Gerard, Weatherlight Hero. Buckle in, this is going to be a long one. Born on the plain of Dominaria, Gerard was part of the Benelish clan Capuchin. His family was murdered by Phyrexian raiders when he was a little boy. Card took him to the Jamurian warlord Sidar Kondo, who adopted him. Gerard and Karn became valued members of Kondo's tribe. Gerard became especially close to his adopted brother, Vuel. But the Phyrexians followed him even there. They sent Stark Invec to infiltrate Kodo's tribe. Stark manipulated Vuel against Gerard. Vuel stole the legacy items Gerard possessed and disabled Karn, selling those items to finance an army. Vuel led this army against his former tribe, eventually leading to the death of his own father. At the time of the war, Gerard was off training with Multani of Yavimala, Mara. Here, he befriended the elf Rofelos and the cat warrior Miri. Cat warrior Miri. After discovering what Vol had done, and also finding out that Vol had mysteriously disappeared, Gerard, Rofelos, and Miri joined the crew of Captain Sisse aboard the skyship Weatherlight, a flying ship that was also part of the legacy. As part, part of the Weatherlight crew, Gerard helped Sisse track down various legacy items. During this time, Gerard fell in love with the ship's navigator, Hannah. The feeling was mutual, and for a while they were happy together. When the ancestral home of the crew member Krovax was assaulted, the Weatherlight crew wanted to help. It turned out the attackers were Phyrexians. During this battle, Rofelos was killed, which was too much for Gerard. He had enough of people dying because of him, so he became a soldier for the Benelish army, rejoining the clan Capuchin. Tarngarth was Sisse's right hand and came to inform Gerard about the captain's abduction. Gerard went to find her. He suspected Stark had a hand in Sisse's abduction, but she had been abducted to the Plain of Wrath, and Stark was the only native of the plane that he knew. Thus, he tracked down the man and saved him from Maraxis of Keld. Stark joined the crew. Weatherlight then picked up some other new members, the wizard Irte, Krovax, and Miri. He then disco discovered Karn, who was still frozen in a state chew like state. Guard managed to reanimate him. After arriving on Wrath, the Evan Carvolrath sent his flying ship Predator to intercept the Weatherlight. In the ensuing battle, Gerard was knocked overboard and fell into the Sky Shroud Forest. He was brought to the home of the Elvish Lord Eldrami, who had taken Miri and Hana prisoner. Gerard explained the situation and the two were released. They were reunited with the rest of the crew, although Karn and Tarngarth had been captured by Volrath's forces. The Weatherlight journeyed to Stronghold Center via the Rath Furnace of Wrath, and the Death Pits of Wrath. They managed to free Tarngarth and Karn. Gerard set others to take him back to take take him back to the ship, which he had Stark lead him to the Dream Halls where Volrath resided. He had to take them all back, and then he went with Stark to the Dream Halls where Volrath resided. It's a mouthful here. In the Dream Halls, Gerard realized that Volrath was Vuel. Angered by his brother's betrayal, Gerard attacked, but had to fight a mind-controlled Sisse and took. Takara first. He managed to subdue the two women without permanently harming them. Volrath then, then tried to take over Tarngarth, but Gerard stabbed him. After he dared, died, Gerard discovered that the being was was actually not his brother. Gerard, it was a clone. Gerard escaped the st stronghold and the Weatherlight made it through the portal. After going through the portal, the Weatherlight's crew crashed on the plain of Mercadia. Most of its crew members left, only to have their ship with the hill of Orum and all their wounded still aboard, snatched away by a giant wave conjured up by Cho Arim. The rest of the crew was then captured by soldiers from Mercadia City. Guard made a deal with the magistrate, promising to train his forces and lead them against the Cho Arim rebels, and in exchange the crew could reclaim their skyship. He discovered halfway through his attack that Orim had learned that Cho, Cho Arim were decent people and the Mercadians were the villains. 
Gerard turned against turned against his forces, but Weatherlight and its crew were captured. Gerard and his friends then made another deal with the magistrate. They could go free of Orem, and Hannah would retrieve the power matrix from the Sparazian merfolk. Instead, Orem and Hannah made a pact with Seprazo against the Mercadians and rescued the others out of jail. In exchange for helping the people of Mercadia rebelling against the magistrate and his forces, the, group, the crew got to use the power matrix to upgrade Weatherlight's engines so they could leave the plane. Asgard led several people, of, several people of his group to retrieve the bones of Ramos, missing pieces from the power matrix. Takara betrayed them and stole the items. She teleported back to Mercadia City, where she captured Squee, Hana, and Karn, then revealed her true identity as Volrath. Gerard managed to free his friends and, reca and recapture the Weatherlight, although Volrath escaped back to Wrath. Weatherlight plane shifted back to Dominaria. Shortly after they arrived home, the Phyrexian invasion began as hordes of Phyrexian soldiers entered Dominaria, pouring through the por portals blacker than night. The crew warned the people of Benalia, but the officials thought they were troublemakers and threw them into jail. They escaped and fought the invaders, but could only save a few from the onslaught. Hannah got infected with a Phyrexian plague and from which she was injured by a piece of wrathy metal. Advised by the mysterious blind seer whom they met in prison, they traveled to Lanoir where they won the battle and were reunited with Eldrami. Gerard and Eldrami tried to use the dream caves to cure Hannah, but to no avail. The blind seer sent the weatherlight to Kolios where the decisive battle of the first stage of the invasion would be fought, but shortly after their arrival, Hannah died. The leading general of the invasion, Sabo Tavak, manipulated Gerard's grief over Hannah to gain control of his mind, and only with the aid of his friends and Karn, breaking his oath of pacifism, could he get free of her hold. Freed at Sabo, Gerard led the Weatherlight through the next stage of the invasion, scoring small victories. After the Rathi overlay took effect, Weatherlight once again had to fight the Predator, and although the battle was won, Gerard and Scree were captured by a new minion of the Phyrexians, Erte, the mage that Gerard had left behind on Wrath. In the stronghold, Gerard discovered another former friend, Krovax, who had become the new Evancarn, took control of the invasion after Sabo failed to stop, failed to bring Gerard to Yawgmoth. Krovax then tr transported Gerard to Phyrexia, where he pledged his oil to Yawgmoth, who promised he could bring Hannah from the dead. Yawgmoth had Gerard fight another former defender of Dominary he had corrupted. Urza. Robbed of his powers as a planeswalker within the Nine Sphere, Urza could not best the skill of Gerard and was decapitated. Gerard got his reward, but finally realized that Yalgamoth couldn't truly re recreate Hannah, only a replica of her. Gerard stabbed the replica, but, Gra but Yalgamoth had replaced his conscience in her, thinking it was the last place Gerard was struck. In a knee-jerk reaction, Yalgamoth flung Gerard and Urza's head, which he was still holding, out of Phyrexia. Emerging to the throne room of Stronghold, Gerard confronted and killed Krovax, after which he was saved by the Weatherlight. The Stronghold was then consumed by lava since the stone door set off a volcano and was located under ever since the overlay. Just before this happened, though, Yagamoth himself entered Dominary in the form of a gigantic black cow that killed and zombified whomever it touched. He spread all over the world, killing th thousands of rent refugees and animating the dead. Gerard and his friends tried to channel the mana from the Null Moon into a destructive beam to eradicate Yagmoth but failed to fully kill him. Without any further options, Urza, who was still alive but decapitated but alive since decapitation isn't lethal, lethal to planeswalkers, asked Gerard to take out his power stone eyes and place them in the two sockets on Karn's chest. This completed the legacy forming forming the, that which legend refers to as the legacy weapon. Tarngarth's, Tarngarth's axe was imbued with all its energy and in one strike at the tentacles of Yagmoth, as it was attacking the weatherlight spread light all over the world, eradicating Yagmoth's essence wherever it touched the ancient evil. Then Gerard, Urza, Karn, and the legacy disappeared with wet, and the weatherlight sank off of Urborg. One year after the invasion, during... Freyles' memorial service, the surviving Weatherlight crew were, were visited by Karn, who had transcended to a planeswalker. That was a long one. I want to give special thanks to MTG Salvation's wiki page, which is where I s pulled most of that information. 
Uh, it was a lot because Gerard is a very important character in the history of Magic the Gathering. Gerard, Weatherlight Hero, has only been printed one time in Commander 2019. The character has appeared in plenty of other cards. He is two costs. Two, he, costs, he costs two colorless, one red, and one white mana to cast. He has a power of three and a toughness of three. He has two special abilities. The first is the evergreen ability, First Strike. The second reads as follows. When Gerard, Weatherlight Hero, dies, exile it and return it to the battlefield. Return to the battlefield all artifact and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. This is an amazingly powerful ability that can really be abused for a lot of fun. There are plenty of options available that allow this card to maximize its abilities. The best option is through board wipes. You could use cards like Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, and Chain Reaction to kill all the creatures on the board. This will kill Gerard, allowing him to die. Then he'll, he'll be exiled and you can bring everything else back into play. And since he's your commander, he goes right into the command zone. Now, also what you could do is uh, enter the battlefield abilities for your creatures that will allow when they come back to do a huge punch to your foe. Karmic Guide and Sun Titan, Titan to scoop creatures who had died earlier in the game is also useful. There are plenty of uh, battlefield options. One trick is to go for a huge finisher. First you want a creature who gives all, all your other creatures haste, like Flamekin, Zealot, or Urbraska the Hidden. Once you have creatures with haste, you then want to attack a few times to really finish off your opponents. Aurelia the War Leader, Combat Celebrant, and Scourge of the Throne will give you that second attack to make sure you can truffle stomp your foes. Also, you want to throw in, if you got one, a Gazella Blade of Gold Knight to really seal the deal as she'll give you double damage. There are plenty of fun ways to play this commander, so make sure you explore them. As far as grading it, I would say he is a tier 1. His ability is stupidly strong and easily abusable. Uh, obviously, you're going to be slowed down by having to keep recasting him as he's going to get more and more expensive. So that's one of his weaknesses. It's also very hard for your opponents to deal with because you know, you got to kill him somehow without being able to hit the graveyard. Uh, a lot of cards are going to have sacrifice abilities like artifacts like Ashnod's Altar that allow you to sack it in response to them trying to do that. His only other weakness is that he's a bit on the slow side because red and white are the two slowest colors in Commander. So this concludes my video. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share it if you can, and comment down below. Peace out.